like the title of the video says, we're going to be covering the Warframe Subsume abilities. Um, these are interesting. Um, I'm a little afraid that they're going to imbalance the game even more than it already is. And I know that, you know, balance isn't a super concern for Warframe. Um, but I do like to see diversity. I do like to see other frames being played. So there is that. Um, in the end, they're going to do what they're going to do. But some of these abilities are extremely powerful. And some of the abilities are hot garbage. So today we are going to be covering the S and the A tier, in my opinion. And I am building a spreadsheet with a lot of notes. Um, I'm trying to condense it down into exactly the essence of why something should get a rank. Um, what I've kind of decided upon for the rankings is that um, the S tier are extremely powerful in almost all situations and some of them even allow you to have meta builds that you could not have before um, and you'll see my rankings over here a little bit of spoilery um, mine are not the same as the communities if you go out to overframe GG um, they do have a voting uh, block where you guys can vote for your tier. I recommend you guys do that so it helps new players or other players that don't necessarily want to watch a video. They can just kind of click and see, oh, I should aim for these. Um, but getting back to it, S is obviously just incredibly powerful. A are going to be very solid and or very flexible skills. Um, these are extremely meaningful choices that buff your build or what you're going for, um, but they don't necessarily change the nature of the game. They don't necessarily solve one of the big problems. They're just really, really good and or fun and flexible to use. Um, then we have B tier. Now B tier is going to be average skills. Like on average, this is going to be about as powerful as the skill you might be replacing. Um, some frames have really bad skills, so that's usually not going to be the case, but in general, this is an averagely powerful skill, but it may just really fit into what you're trying to do with your build. Um, I don't necessarily look down on B tier picks, um, but they're not going to generally be nearly as powerful as the S and the A tier. Um, now getting down to C tier, these are bad skills generally you're never gonna take them um, sometimes you'll take them as a meme or just for the flavor that it gives uh, maybe you really like a certain frame and you just want to put that ability on something else um, but in generally you're not taking it very seriously um, if you do that and a lot of the time you don't need to you know you just you really don't need to have like certain frames are already so powerful it kind of doesn't matter what you put on them um, so you can kind of meme around with like a nova and just get rid of one of your better skills for you know a bad skill and see what happens um, and then finally we have D tier these are bad please don't take these please don't take them they're not good I don't like them even as memes they're they're a joke um, please I don't even know I don't anyway moving on so that's basically how we're going to be doing the ranking system for me personally um, feel free to do ha however you guys want to um, but I am going to be talking about each ability and why I've placed it there and why it's really really good so I'm actually going to go in order that I have chosen the most powerful abilities. Um, I am going to be using this site just to kind of tooltip over stuff so you guys can see basically what they do if you're not familiar with every frame um, because there are a lot of them. Um, we are again only going to be covering S and A. I'm going to do a separate video for B because that is a majority of where the abilities lie. And then I'm going to do a video covering C and D abilities and explaining why they're bad and why you shouldn't take them. And please don't take them, please. All right. So S tier, my top pick is Nidus's Larva. This thing is awesome. It is a massive AOE grouping tool. 
this thing is going to allow frames that couldn't farm before to be able to farm this thing is insane if you have aoe weapons this thing is insane if you like gas damage it literally builds enables certain things and it makes certain frames that don't have pull skills really powerful um, I'm looking at like a necros for farming. You're actually going to be able to pull enemies together, kill them with a slashing weapon, and then desecrate them all on your own. I think this is going to be really powerful in everyone's hands. Grouping skills are very, very powerful. It's the reason you run Nidus. It's the reason you run Vobin. Um, this thing is insane. It is absolutely ridiculous. Now, coming in just behind that is Roar. Now, Roar is a damage buff. Now, that being said, this is an expensive skill. Um, it is very powerful, unconditional damage in increase. And in case you guys didn't know, the reason why this is so good is because it is a multiplicative bonus in most cases. Um, this is calculated as faction damage. So if you're not running faction damage mods on your weapons, this counts as faction damage mods. And it is just really powerful for damage and statuses especially. So just keep in mind, this thing is also, also, it affects your entire team. I should have led with that. And the augment isn't half bad. The augment is defensive, which who cares on Rhino, but on other frames, you're actually getting some really good defensive um, stuff out of the augment. So Rhino's Roar comes in literally on my list one point behind Larva. Um, <clears throat> so uh, moving on, I actually have placed two more frame abilities in the S tier on my list. So we have Prota's Dispensary. This thing is a beast. I have a whole video on what it is and what it can do and the fact that it can go on other frames now especially frames that are farming frames that have expensive abilities to use this thing's this thing's awesome it is going to change the game and how it works very similar to larva you're going to have infinite energy you're going to have infinite ammo and infinite health and depending on your build you might just have one or the other or however you decide to play this the only drawback to this is this is an immobile skill so you're going to either have to stay near the dispensary or come back every few seconds and pick up your stuff it is really not that annoying to do especially when you're playing in most of the ways that warframe plays right now in defense and survival and eso and stuff like that the dispensary is absolutely s tier i don't know why it it isn't shown to be that it like i don't know what the community is thinking on that one but it, that's okay um we all you know can disagree and additionally we don't know what this thing's augment is going to be because it's not out yet so um it may not get an augment who knows but if it ever gets an augment unless it's outright trash this thing is going to be insanely powerful and i think it's going to be popular in general just it just will be it's it's very much a a lazy skill so if you don't want to have to deal with jumping in and out of operator all the time this is for you if you don't want to have to go and farm out some expensive arcanes this one's for you um so moving on from proteus dispensary we have mirages eclipse this thing is absolutely ridiculous it is a multiplier to damage it is a multiplier to defense now that being said it is based on the current amount of light or dark that you have so um, you may or may not have the buff you want quote unquote at the time um, so it is conditional however if you are able to at all manipulate or go into a mission type where you know what kind of lighting you're going to have, this thing is the most powerful skill on the list. But because it's conditional, I would rank it a little bit lower than the others. Um, it is still S tier, uh, but it's a little bit lower than the other ones that are fairly unconditional. Um, extremely, extremely powerful, multiplicative bonuses. Um, yeah, this thing is absolutely amazing and the augment isn't half bad either 
um, it it allows your eclipse to become an AOE for your team so you start factoring in all that together and this thing is very easily S and if you can manipulate the conditions it's it's a S plus this thing is outright insane with what it is capable of doing um, so that is actually going to conclude it for the S's that I have um, moving on to the A's now interestingly I have Hildren's Pillage as an A skill now um, it is very solid as an A skill. I have a whole video on what it is and what it can do. It's very powerful on Hildren. However, on a shield frame, on any frame where you're going to be using shields, this is an S-class skill. Hands down, period. Fight me. This thing is ridiculous. It, it basically strips everything in a country mile of their shields and armor. It's, I believe it's 25% at base level, scaling with strength. The range of it really scales mostly with duration. Um, so you can use this on frames where you don't really care about range that much, um, interestingly. And it removes status effects from you and your allies. And it replenishes an insane amount of shields and over shields. Basically, this is a full tap for your shields and over shields when it comes back every single time until you've cast it like eight times on the same enemy or something at high levels this thing is really really good um just in general in every way now the only drawback to this and this is why i have it at a tier um is that the augment in my opinion won't work um, it does have an interaction and we're, we're going to talk more about how skills can have interactions with other skills and a lot of the augments work like that so I, I don't know how they're going to be doing that I hope they don't change it so I don't think this augment will work um, so we'll see though I guess it could work if you have an actual Hildren in your group to cast Haven um, so basically what the augment does is it deals some damage if if there's a haven on the field at the, at the time um it's not that great of an augment to begin with it's it's very meh um but yeah hildren exceptionally powerful tippy top tippy top of a now moving on we have nova's null star this thing is a damage reduction this thing scales off of ability duration instead of strength so this will allow you to put it on some kind of weird offbeat builds um, so that you don't need to scale strength and still have some damage reduction now this is really good i'm thinking on like maybe vobin and things like that where i literally just have 10 percent strength um, on Bastille builds where you're doing repelling Bastille or on Vortex builds where you just don't care about your strength in any case. Um, so this is going to give you some very hefty damage reduction, pretty easily going to be able to get up to, you know, at least 45% damage reduction. So cut all damage in half. Um, if you wanted to sacrifice some stats, you could get this up to 75% extremely easily. Um, so no start very solidly in the A. I would say probably about um, towards the middle of the A tier. Um, it's it's probably a little bit stronger than the middle, but it's it's right there around the middle. Um, uh, maybe maybe a little bit stronger depending on your frame. Um, next up we have Ivara. Now I I saw this earlier in the week, and keep in mind these community rankings are as a point in time of this video. So this is um, what is this August fifteenth? It's hard with Corona, guys. Sorry, um, but yeah, we have Ivara's Quiver. This thing does so many cool things it has really great utility for yourself it has really great utility for your team one of the augments gives you critical damage which on certain frames or on certain guns can get pretty gnarly um, this is a great skill i would actually land this one dead in the middle of um dead in the middle of a so nova's would be a little bit higher i'd put avars dead in the middle of a um very very solid very very cool as well like this has a lot of flavor and if you want to feel like you're like green arrow or batman and you have gadgets and stuff and you want to run around as vobin and have four different grenades and four different arrows and just be swapping and not be as effective but it, it, it's cool 
like regardless of how powerful it is which it is powerful it is very cool um next up we have wukong's defy um so i wouldn't rate this quite as high um in this tier i will give it this it is the best all around oh crap button in this list period hands down you become invincible pretty much instantaneously on cast and it gives you an extremely strong armor buff after the fact this thing is really really good it is an amazing oh crap button the only problem with it is that you can't actually perform most actions while you are defying so you can't shoot your guns um, you will absorb some damage and then deal it back to enemies this isn't gonna fly at high levels it just isn't gonna do that much damage especially if enemies have armor um, but it is useful for knocking enemies back so even after it ends you will kind of clear your immediate vicinity of enemies so this thing is the absolute best hands down oh crap button in the list and that's why it deserves an a i would put this a little bit below like some of the other always useful a skills um but it, it's good it's really really good um, pretty much tied with Wukong is Wisp's Breach Surge. So this thing is kind of interesting, but effectively what it does is it is an immediate AoE CC, and then the enemies have a debuff on them that if you kill them during this debuff, they will release Wisps. This is very similar to Kit Gun's Arcane, um, where it releases homing projectiles and they home in on heads and stuff like that. It can crit, it, it scales, etc., etc. This is a really, really cool ability. And if you like kind of running and gunning and just going from one enemy to the next and seeing Wisps fly everywhere and you like using Kit Gun so it stacks, it's really cool. Um, it's really, really cool. I think it's very strong as a defensive skill and on top of that it is very strong as an offensive skill now it isn't the best defensive skill and it isn't the best offensive skill but because both of them are in there and it is very solid we also don't know what its augment is going to be so this has the potential to be kind of insane um, but right now it's a very solid a pick just below um, for me at least just below wukong's defy Next up, and the final member of my list, is going to be Chroma's Elemental Ward. So, Chroma's Elemental Ward, what is this thing? Now, this thing I actually did place a little bit lower on the A tier. Um, this thing is extremely flexible outside of the mission. So, when you begin your mission and you choose your energy color, you're going to be able to move and fit this on almost any frame like most frames are going to be able to use this thing's effects you're going to be able to get flat bonuses like health um, shields uh, reload speed stuff like that um, that being said all of the effects from your buffs are going to end up being um, additive right so there's there's strong but additive bonuses um, now the only reason why this is really a is because it's an aoe it affects your ally so these are going to be decently strong additive bonuses but they're going to hit your entire team you also based on the elemental color are going to be able to have pretty interesting abilities some of the actual on use procs like the fire when enemies are nearby the toxin when enemy enemies are nearby aren't that great the lightning is really solid the cold is pretty decent um not for damage but for the status effect um so this one is a little bit harder to place um i would say it's it's very low a tier um, but if you put it in b tier it would be like max b tier it would be absolutely max b tier so i would put it pretty low a tier um in general those additive bonuses for your team are going to be helpful they're going to be nice um, but not everybody's built the same way so you're going to see some varying results on it now that is actually going to conclude it for my s and a tier video um, if you guys disagree let me know if i missed something or misrepresented anything you guys know the drill let me know um, i think this is a 
very cool system that is probably going to provide a lot of imbalance to frames um, like frames that are already really good are going to get better and bad frames are going to be kind of okay ish maybe we'll see um, so yeah let me know um, what I missed or how I missed it um, maybe I missed an augment or a specific skill interaction um, keep in mind I I don't like if you're looking at Hera and you're like how dare you blah blah like I don't know if his augment is going to to combo the way that maybe you think it will um, but we'll see how it goes this is a very early tier list and i want to be pretty thorough but i also want to get through all the frames guys so uh yeah if you like the video you know like the video if you could do that that helps me out um but anyway thanks for watching guys